If you've seen other videos on this channel about these gargantuan destroyers, you'll know just how passionate I can get about this ship in Star Citizen. And during Invictus Week this year, the opportunity to walk around just a small part of a Javelin-class destroyer made it a natural subject for a location spotlight. This video will showcase some of the internal and external spaces of the UEES Warhammer, with some commentary to talk you through what you're looking at, as well as some of the background lore for this ship. I'm Farrister, and whatever your take on the whole Star Citizen in Alpha testing debate, I hope you'd agree, this game can be incredibly impressive. And in this video series, we'll celebrate that, whilst hopefully providing you with some interesting locations that you might like to go out and explore. So, if you're new to the channel, you may want to subscribe to be notified of future videos as they go live. For one week only, during the Invictus celebrations, you'll find the UEES Warhammer docked to either Bajini Point, Everest Harbour, or Port Tressler via the new docking port technology. If you're lucky enough to be watching this video whilst the event is running, you will be able to track the position of the fleet via your Mobiglass, or alternatively look at any number of the displays in-game to find out where the ship currently is and which docking port to go to. Once you get aboard, you'll be on the port side of B-Deck of the Javelin. The designers and artists have done a great job of giving visual cues to help you know where you are on the ship, and the deck designations from A up top to D down below help you to know which floor you're on. In addition, each floor has its own look and feel to it, from the brightly lit corridors of A deck to the industrial feeling C deck. The UEES Warhammer has a really interesting history within the lore of the Star Citizen universe. First entering service in the year 2832, in Star Citizen terms this ship is over a hundred years old. In that time, it's been involved in engagements with the Vandal, and was present at the fall of Caliban in 2884, earning a Ribbon of Valor. But for many players, you'll recall that earlier this year, this ship was present for the Xenothreat event, where the great big cannons of the Javelin brought some pain. There are only a few rooms available during the Javelin tour in this instance. There are some additional places in the Javelin that are inaccessible but fully modelled, but since I'm a good law-abiding citizen, there's only footage here from those places that have been made publicly accessible. After entering the ship through the docking port, you're able to walk down much of the length of the port side of the ship, including past three of the main broadside gun turrets. These turrets are armed with two size 7 weapons for attacking larger ships, and two size 4 weapons for attacking smaller ships or torpedoes. There are six of these turrets in total, three on each side, on top of the javelin. It's possible to hop into the turret and see the firing arcs. In addition to these broadside turrets, the Javelin is armed with a further seven manned turrets, for a total of 13. There are four at the front of the ship, two above and two below, and there are three on the underside, centrally mounted. These seven are currently armed with two size 7 weapons each, but not with the additional size 4 weapons, meaning that the underside of the javelin is a little weaker than the top side. In addition to this armament, you'll probably notice the great big turret at the back of the ship, between the engine nacelles. There are actually two of these anti-ship turrets, one ventral and one dorsal, and they are each armed with four very large cannons. And finally, the Javelin also comes with two torpedo bays, with huge anti-capital torpedoes. Also, on the tour on B-Deck, you're able to see some of the sleeping quarters for the crew. These are neatly arranged in the centre of the ship, with sleeping quarters flanking the front and back of the mess hall. Just the sheer number of bunks gives a clue as to the size of this ship, and just how many crew will be required to operate it. On the starboard side of each of the sleeping quarters is a large, military-style bathroom. It's really well designed and beautifully modelled, giving the feel for what you might expect the heads on an active naval vessel to look like. 
and between the two sleeping quarters is the mess hall, or a combination of galley and mess hall. There's a small kitchen area, as well as ample seating for crew in their downtime. At the end of the mess is a games area, incorporating games machines and a games table, as well as stairs to take you up or down a deck. This area feels really detailed, although it is quite surprising to see the stairs forming part of the room rather than placed outside. Heading down to Sea Deck, whilst there aren't any rooms to visit, there's a clear transition in visual styles, as this deck houses more of the engineering equipment of the Javelin. And if you're brave enough to delve into the lowest subdeck of the Javelin, you'll see that style further accentuated, as in, it's so dark you can't really see anything. Heading all the way up the ship to A deck, the corridors have a much more open feel to them, well lit and accessible. The only room currently accessible here as part of the tour is the large open briefing room, which features a holographic table and seating on either side. This is an excellent space, and makes me very excited to undertake a briefing here in Squadron 42, as well as eventually joining player-led briefings here in the largest player-purchasable warship that will eventually be available in the verse. All in all, we're only presented with a small part of the Javelin to actively tour, with many areas such as the bridge, hangar bay, medical bay, engineering and brig still to be discovered. Yet, I'm left feeling incredibly impressed by the scale of this ship. I do have to stress that I'm also left feeling that any player who thinks they will operate this ship effectively on their own may be a little too optimistic, but as a setting for a group of players, I'm very excited for what this ship might offer in the future. The level of artistic and design detail is what you might come to expect from Star Citizen, which is really top of the line. But what do you think of the Javelin class destroyer? Have you taken the tour yourself? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully you're getting a sense by now of how passionate I am about this ship, so you know I'll read your comments. And if you've enjoyed this video, I'd be grateful if you'd press that like button and maybe even share with a friend. That helps me to understand what you're enjoying watching on the channel so I can tailor videos that I make to be the most interest to you. Otherwise, as always, Thank you for watching.